How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Coal Iron YouTube channel. My name is Logan. I'm one of the development team engineers here at Coal Iron. And today we are talking about the digital press controller. So we announced this back at Blade Show of 2021, and it's been in kind of a beta testing phase with some of our close customers that we've been working with over the last few months. And we are finally uh, reaching a point where we're gonna be able to launch version 1.0 of the DPC here, hopefully towards the end of March. So stay tuned for a more hard release date on that. But in today's video, we're just gonna go over kind of the general operation and use case for the controller. And in, in a separate video, we'll actually do a full installation build for if you already own a Coal Iron Press and wanna purchase the retrofit kit, we'll go over everything that you need to uh, do to get this installed. But for now, we're just gonna go over the operation of the press controller. So the first thing that you do when you approach it is go ahead and flip the power switch. And I'm quickly gonna validate that we have all of our ports here on the bottom of the controller are have something plugged into them just to make sure that we're all squared away. We have a remote uh, joystick here on the side of the press with a mag switch attachment, which is awesome because this will allow us to, instead of having a fixed linkage system like you've seen on our legacy presses, I can put this anywhere. If I need to come work towards the front of the machine or even on the back side of it um, and really take full advantage of the C-frame design of our large frame presses, uh, having a switch that we can move around is gonna be killer for that. So I'll go ahead and throw that back there um, and just throw this, the lever on the mag switch into place and it locks it um, solidly up to the press. We also have a foot pedal that is uh, also on a cable as well. Um, so similar advantages there, you can kick that foot pedal around to exactly where you need it for however you're using your press. So as you saw the controller boot up in the background um, and load through its parameters, this is our home screen here. So I'll just go over a couple of quick details here and then we'll fire the press up and I'll show you guys how to run it. So we have three tabs across the top. Our home screen is where we live. It's everything that's going on the press. It's our current mode and our current set points. The mode screen is just selecting between the four modes that we have available. And then our settings screen uh, has a couple of parameters that are kind of set it and forget it parameters. Um, and I'll go over those in a little bit. So here on the home screen, we have our current mode here, which when you turn the press controller on, it always defaults to manual mode. You have our current position and think of this as a digital readout on a milling machine. This is where the press currently is. And so uh, the first thing that you'll wanna do when you fire up the digital press controller and load up whatever dies you're gonna be using is fire up the press and close the dies together to touch and then we'll zero out the controller. So I'm gonna fire up the press, jog it down to shut, hit our zero button, and now the press has a reference point of where it is when the dies are shut. So here, below those three items, oh, we also have our, our current units here, but again, that's kind of a set it and forget it type setting. So here on our active tab here on the home screen, uh, you'll see maximum set point and our minimum set point. So this is our operating window for the RAM. The beauty of the press controller now is it always knows where it is throughout the travel. And so if I wanna say, take some three inch square stock and reduce it down to one inch square stock, I can just say, hey, I want my minimum set point to be one inch. And then on the active set point, we'll say, you know, I don't need to go all the way up to the top of the RAM. So we'll say, we're gonna stop at say 3.5 inches, give us some clearance to get the stock in and out from between the dies. So now, depending on what mode you're in, the press will only operate in that window. So real quick, the last part of the home screen is our standby set points here. And so all of these are is a set point that you can key in and kind of hold in your back pocket until uh, it's time to bring them to the front of the press where you're actually gonna use them. So this works great if you're trying to forge out rectangular stock and you need those two different dimensions, those two different lower set points, or if you have multiple users or multiple pieces of material in the forge at once and you've got kind of multiple projects going on, you can kind of save where you are on the other project on the standby set points and then just by tapping this arrow button, swap between the set points and bring the standby one into the active one and store the active one to bring back later. So that's our home screen here. Our mode screen is really self-explanatory. It's just switching between the modes. And I'll go over those here real quick. So the manual mode, uh, the foot pedal doesn't do anything and the joystick is up and down. It's what you're totally used to on a standard coal iron press. The auto mode is my personal favorite because it's just gonna bounce back and forth between those set points and just cycle automatically as long as you have your foot on the pedal. 
and uh, when you leave your foot off the pedal, it will return to the top of its stroke. So you can clear uh, your workpiece and get back to the forge and back from the forge in between the dies. So I'll go ahead and jump into auto mode here real quick and demo what that looks like. So I'll switch back to that set point I had originally said, which is at one inch and three inches. And I'm gonna say here, um, you know, say I, I wanna start the press and I, I have a physical piece that I want to uh, match the thickness of. One of the advantages is say, you know, Say I have a piece that I stick between the dies and lower the dies and it ends at 1.427 inches like the digital readout says here. I can hit the set from current button here and that will save that exact position directly into uh, the set point. Um, the other way to enter your set point is to tap on the number and a keypad will show up where you can key in what you're trying to forge down to. I'll circle back to the auto mode demo here. So we have our lower set point is set to that 1.427. Our upper set point is set to 3.5 inches. And as you can see, auto mode. Now, now with the auto mode, uh, obviously the size of your window is going to determine kind of the cyclic rate at which the press will function. So if I change our 3.5 to, gosh, say 1.6, and so we have, you know, about a quarter of an inch of, of space between our set points, and I try that, you're going to see a lot faster cycle. So that faster cycling is going to be really awesome for uh, forging round stock or drawing out a billet or uh, I mean there's lots of applications for these types of modes but that's kind of the the nature of the beast with the auto mode. The spring return mode is one of the more useful uh, modes for um, kind of freeform forging and, and uh, not necessarily concerned about the repeatability of the work because uh, it operates with the same set points. So if you don't want to overshoot something, you can always set that lower set point. But all it is is a uh, push to ex the foot pedal to extend and uh, release the foot pedal to retract back to the top of your window. So I'll demo that here real quick. So as you may have saw in that uh, last clip, I switched our set points to that zero and five inch set point, which is the standard set point that it boots up to, um, just to, to give a full demo of that spring return mode. So other than those three modes, the other one we have is our punch mode. And the punch mode is something that we're still in development on and we will be releasing updates for in the future as it develops further. But in its current form, Think of it as a single cycle spring return. So if you're doing a production run of hammers or something like that where you're punching a lot of holes, uh, you can lower with the joystick the, the press down to just above your workpiece. And then if you press down the foot pedal, the punch will punch as far as it can all the way through the, the piece. And then it'll return to the top of its stroke and stop. So it won't continue to cycle and you have to release your foot from the foot pedal to cycle it again. Um, and so it'll be kind of more of a, um, iron worker style punch cycle than uh, you would see with like our spring return. So yeah, so those are our four modes. And then over here in the settings tab, just a quick overview, we have a, our units, so we can do inches and millimeters. Um, and there's just a swap button there to swap between the two. And that setting will save if you turn the controller off and back on. Um, the set points and stuff will reset if you uh, power cycle the controller, but the inches and our lower set point offset will, uh, will save. Um, the, other setting that we have is this lower set point offset. And so what that is, is if you notice in our, when I uh, am cycling the press, you know, we say I have a set point of 1.5 inches. Um, when I run the press in spring return, you'll notice that we overshot that set point by about 50 thousandths of an inch. And the reason for that is because a, we have a lower set point offset, but we're not working any material. So there is no hot material to slow the press down to reach that set point. And so depending on what material you're forging, what style of project you're forging, how hot you're working it, all of those variables will affect the accuracy of the press being able to hit that set point. And so that's why we've included this setting, the lower set point offset, that comes standard at about 30 thousandths, which is what we found for 
um, about that 1045 working at a, at a you know lower orange heat or forging out a Damascus, kind of the finished dimensions of a Damascus billet. Um, that's kind of been the sweet spot for those two specific styles of forging. But as you use the controller and as you, you, know, you develop your processes on it, uh, you can hit the set button here and key in a new uh, number if you notice that your press is overshooting or undershooting um, according to that parameter. So one of the other things I wanna to touch on is with the auto mode and with the punch mode, uh, if you are pressing through a material and the material is too cold and the press can't quite reach its set point, we've accounted for that. So I'm gonna demo that by setting our, set, our lower set point to negative quarter of an inch, which obviously the press will never be able to reach. And we're in auto mode here, or I'll put us in auto mode here, and uh, I'll show you what that looks like. So it's gonna try. It's gonna try for about a half to three quarters of a second to push through that to that set point. And if it doesn't make a certain amount of progress in that time, it'll return to the top of the stroke and try again. So that way you're not pinning your workpiece in the press. Um, and you can still kind of move to a hotter section of the workpiece or go back to the forge to, to take another heat. Um, so that, that's the timeout function of the auto mode. Uh, that pretty much covers the general use case of the, the press controller. One other thing I wanted to touch on is the joystick at this point um, will always go up and down regardless of what mode you're in and it will ignore the set points. So if you need to jog down to a new uh, set point and set it, the joystick is the way to go. You also have a jog up and jog down button here on the controller that's hardwired to uh, the brains of the controller in case you need to use these, um, but they, they do the same thing. So yeah, overall that's uh, b the basic um, gist of the controllers. Again, like I said previously, we'll have a separate video to go over the full install if you already own a coal iron press. Um, and the other thing is that we will continue to develop new modes <clears throat> and new features for the controller and we have a method of releasing software updates that's very easy to upload to the controller which will also be a separate video once that time comes um, but yeah other than that that is kind of the overview and general operation and kind of uh, ui tour of the press controller and we're stoked to get these back in stock and into your guys's hand to see what you can do with it so other than that, guys, that's all I've got for you. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave us a comment down below or shoot us an email at service at And uh, we hope you guys enjoy the press controller. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.